Let's drink beer It makes my mind clear It takes me away from here Let's drink beer Let's drink beer Pop the top, lift it up, drink it up Awesome, welcome back to another episode of The Art of Beer. We are here at Hanakoa Brewing Company and we are with Josh Kopp, owner and head brewer. Yeah. Head brewer and we're not only drinking his beer, Brewing a beer today. Let's do it. All of it. <laughs> All in of there. It. Let's make some beer. <laughs> Let's make some beer. It's the most scientifically calculated beer you've ever had. Yes. We're going to truncate making a beer into this just, episode. Just look at all that. What that, are you doing? I'm, I'm just dumping in the extract. What is extract? It's, it's just a bunch of sugar that came from Captain Crunch cereal. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Oh, yeah. Where's the professional stirring oh, tool? Oh, yeah. Well, we needed the biggest spoon we had, you know. So I went and got this guy over at the, the hardware store because the other ones never had the spoon big enough. So got this spoon going in. This is very scientific, you know, just like the Dark Ages. <laughs> All right. But yeah, basically, we couldn't uh, do everything, but this is as close to making beer as we can get. So it's on a little burner. It's pretty simple to make beer at home. All these supplies were bought at Homebrew in Paradise. If that, you're here, that's where you go. Yeah. So what are we drinking? What's in, what's in this glass that we already drank half of? Uh, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> start. This was cool. Setup is always fun. We uh, <laughs> so in our glass right now we have uh, the collab that we did with Ghost Town Brewing Company out of Oakland, California. It's a uh, Necronomicon. If anyone's familiar with Lovecraft, the Necronomicon. Um, so it's basically uh, New Zealand Nectaron hops, which throw a lot of nectarine. Uh, and then we also use uh, Mosaic and Simcoe, which are hops from the Pacific Northwest. So you get a lot of like, you know, fresh cannabis. Um, you get some grapefruit out of it. Um, basically, uh, me and uh, the head brewer over at Ghost Town have been like buds since like cutting our teeth in the brewing days. And so him and his crew were able to come out here recently. And so we got to do this beer and it was really fun. And it's been really hard to get these hops and he's kind of got a hook because everybody in the brewing industry has a hook on something. <laughs> you know, that never really went away for a lot of us. Um, but yeah, it's pretty tasty. It's delicious. Cheers. Oh, reach. There we go. Oh, made it happen. Yeah. It's already stretched through. We, we forgot our table, so we went and grabbed a couple of kegs and some pallets. And we're, we're in a brewery. We're in a brewery. We got all yeah. the things we need, so. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, of all the things, we don't have a table. <laughs> <laughs> but these are some cool palettes, except for this little just shit right there. Yeah. It's so proof. It's the hand. Holder. This is good. It does have, Oh my God. it's got some dank to it, but yeah. you still get a little of that nectarine and kind of. Thanks, man. It's fruity. It's, it's, it's bitter. It's light. It's got kind of got all, it's like, West, it's super West Coasty. Yeah. So basically, um, so when we're looking at like the actual composition of the beer, like it was just two row barley. So pretty similar to just us pouring in the powder, except we did a different process. Um, and then with the Nectaron hops, we just use like the pelletized versions, but we also use whole cone, like the whole flower hop of the Simcoe, the Mosaic. Um, we also use a product called Mosaic Spectrum. So it's like an extract that's used on the fermentation side to get more of that mosaic aroma. And then um, we dry hopped also with the Nectaron pellets and then Mosaic Simcoe Cryo. So that's like another extract form of everything. Sorry, this was like a lot to take down, but. Extracts and fresh, right? So your yeah. IPA, IPA isn't as simple as you think it is. <laughs> yeah, you can get pretty weird with it. Here's not um, easy. Oh, it takes some work yeah. to it. <laughs> there are some people that were, I mean, it's just like garlic. Like you've got garlic salt, you got garlic powder, you got fresh garlic, you got like the minced garlic. So That's a good way to you put can it. find like all different forms of the product to use. And the How results much, differ yeah. depending on what you use. Yeah. So. How much has that changed since you started brewing? Uh, honestly, when I started, most people were just using uh, pellets that are called T90s. Those are pretty much like what we got here that we're going to add later. And I'll show you guys that. Um, people were using whole cone hops. There was actually this thing called hop noodle. <laughs> so there are these like strings of like hop extract that people were throwing in. Um, and then probably around 2015, 2016, you started seeing more of like the cryo hops and all that stuff. If we ever start a restaurant, let's make a dish, call it hop noodle. 
Hop noodle. Hop noodle. <laughs> People are going to think you got to jump around. <laughs> That's your next pasta dish. <laughs> yeah. Well, this beer is tasting awesome. We're going to keep, uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Ma mashing? This is kind of like the mash step, right? Yeah, pretty much. We're, we're extracting, you know, we're mixing it up. We're going to keep doing this. We'll be right back and continue and follow us on a brewing journey. Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for just $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code AHI THING. Hey guys, welcome back to a special edition of the Art of Beer. We're with uh, Josh over here at uh, Hanakoa and we're brewing a beer and we're drinking a beer. Last beer, one of the great things about being in a brewery, sometimes you get to drink beers straight from the bright tanks, uh, something that hasn't quite been released yet. But right now we're drinking something that is an available year round. What are we drinking? We're drinking Party Boy. Party Boy. Yeah. <laughs> we've had this on the oh, yes, show we've before. Had. Yeah. A couple of times. How about you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, this has actually become, like, since uh, since Chrissy went on the show with you guys, I don't think it was a staple, and now it's like a like a year round. Like, this is what we're like cranking out at the moment. You're um, welcome. We we did that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dan. You're the reason why I lie awake at night wondering if I'm going to be able to provide. <laughs> no, but so um, it's a cool beer. Like the. The whole thing of it, like, kind of started from like a wild night with uh, another guy that used to brew out here, Kyle McDonald. Um, but now, like, we still use rice from the rice factory. It's their Yume Pudika rice. It's grown in Hokkaido, and then they process everything there directly across the street from us. And it's been cool because since we've done that, Maui Brewing Company has worked with them. Lani Kai Brewing Company has worked with them, um, and then other breweries have kind of considered it as well. And it's been really fun to play around with all the different stuff they bring in. Um, but yeah, uh, this beer has really become like a fun beer that we just kind of like go back and forth with on stuff. So we use Hollertau Middlefruit, which is a German hop, Motueka, which is a New Zealand hop in this. Um, we also naturally carbonate this beer. So what that means is when fermentation is taking place, we actually capture the CO2 that's being produced from fermentation. So the bubbles are considerably smaller, so you don't get as much carbonic bite, but it's enough CO2 that it just kind of wafts away. So it's considerably easier to drink. Um, yeah. This beer, um, it's a word we use a lot on this show. We call it crushable. Yeah. yeah. And so this is, usually when I come to Hanukkah, I sit down, I order a party boy, and then I look at the menu for what beer I'm going to drink after. <laughs> you know, it's like, I know I get this and this is going to be good. And then I take a look at the menu, so. <laughs> Did you ever think like, when you starting out, that one of your top sellers was going, being in Hawaii, yeah. your top seller was going to be a, a lager? No, um, we, I actually really wanted to do lagers from the start and it was like always part of the business plan. And um, when this really started taking off as far as demand, it was shocking. And actually the fact that it's doing well right now has kind of made it where we've kind of had to pull back on some other lager projects we wanted to do. I honestly thought it was going to be hazy IPA. And even now, like our West Coast IPA is like moving really well. And I'm just kind of in shock because it's like, well, these are all the things I really want to make. And now it's like we get to actually make them. Well, I think it's a testament to the, to the beer because I mean, Hawaii is like, kind of the place of lager dominated, right? Like like most of the country, most of the world, but in Hawaii even more so, you got Kona Longboard, you got Maui Bikini Blonde, you got Heineken, you know, and they got the cores, all that other stuff. But this has found like a very, very like stable following. Yeah, I mean, I it's really exciting because I mean, having it at the brewery is different than having it at another account because we use a different faucet in house. So even having it in the can is different. So you experience it in all these different ways. And like, I would have never thought that we would have had the opportunity to really play around with a logger consistently and be able to dial it in. Whereas like, you know, if I, if I when I open, if somebody was like, hey, by the way, you're going to make a rice pilsner and that's mostly what you're going to make. I was going to be like, yeah, yeah no yeah, way, right. yeah. no way, dude. I did not contract all those other hops. <laughs> well, we're happy you are. Thanks, guys. Dude, how um, are we doing over here? What do we got going on? Oh, it's so getting close. So it's, it's getting close to boil. Some of you guys might not be able to see, but it's starting to get the bubbles. It's like, you know, like Dave and Dan got their hands in and they're just doing this. And then me and Tim are back here and we're doing this. <laughs> and it's just going. Why, why, are we, why are we waiting for it to boil? 
Um, we just got to sanitize it. Okay. That's the whole reason beer was potable back in the dark ages. Um, we're going to add some hops too, though, so that, you know, we get some bitterness, flavor, and aroma. But yeah. Get some tasty goodness in there. Tasty taste. Oh, yeah. Let me give it a stir. Oh, yeah. Give that a stir. Mm. Just make sure it's not too sweet or not too rancid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just right. <laughs> Little rap rap linger for you. Yeah, if anybody has not seen Raps Hawaii, it is the thing to see. Watch Raps. All right, guys, we're going to take a little break. We're going to keep making some beer. Go grab a cold one. We'll be right back at Hanakoa with the Art of Beer. Windows Hawaii. Windows are not only designed to beautify your home, but also to make your home more secure, energy efficient, and virtually noise proof. Contact Mario now for your free estimate in home. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HiFiCU.com. Welcome back from the commercial break. We are at Hanakoa Brewing Company in Kaka'ako, and we're not in the tap room, as you guys can see. No. With everything behind us, we are in the back, hanging out with Josh, head brewer and owner. We're making some beer, and as always, we are drinking some beer. What do we got, man? Dubliner! <laughs> Dubliner. Looks dark. Oh, I like those kind of cheers. Darknesses. Oh, it's so good. So oh, yeah. this is uh, a black lager that we um, did uh, to kind of like fill the void for St. Patrick's Day. Um, previously, we'd done a dry Irish stout uh, and nitrogenated it and had some difficulties there. And honestly, being a brewery that makes a lot of lagers, it was like, well, why don't we try to do this? So um, we kind of tried taking a, a dry Irish stout recipe, modified it to kind of fit the needs of what we we're trying to do, um, and then basically came with this guy. Uh, this beer was about six or seven weeks to make. Um, and yeah, it's just super soft, uh, really drinkable. And honestly, this is something that I feel like if you had like a shepherd's pie or like some soda bread, Fish or and chips. yeah, fish and chips. Well, like it'll well, Dave, just go really well. Dave's happy because we've talked about it numerous times. Dave loves black lagers. I was gonna not mention that it's my favorite style of beer, but um, no, it is my favorite oh. style of beer. Oh, well, thanks, Dave. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> What's great about this one is like it's got a lot of those like like dry Irish stout qualities, Guinness, right? But it's so much softer and lighter, and like I think you were mentioning, like it's softer and lighter on the, the mouth still. Yeah, no, it's so good. And like I always say, it just goes with the food we eat. You know, not just Irish food, but like burgers and oh yeah, and brown sugar shoyu and all that. It's it is it's the beer. It's the beer that like people in Hawaii don't know they they want. Like, I actually the, uh, last night I got we got tacos from Broken Boundary, and once we finished the Broken Boundary beer, I went into this, <laughs> and I still had one taco, a carne asada taco left, and I was like, well, let's see how this goes. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. this does work really well. Yeah. <laughs> Like you said, shoyu, pork, like... Well, talking about chicken beers, heka. let's, chicken let's check heka, on what we're doing heka. here and find out what's happening with our beer. Where's, where's our beer at, Josh? We're uh, almost there. Yeah, looks like she's getting there, I'd say. <laughs> Is she you know? getting there? <laughs> yeah, just getting a real good evaporation right there. You can see the steam just kind of doing this. It's pretty cool, I'd say. This is by far the least professional I've ever been in a podcast. It's great. <laughs> Me if you're, too. If you're a professional no in a podcast, then something's going wrong, right? Yeah. You almost, uh, you almost sounded like the old uh, SNL think... skit with uh, Dicka. Oh, Mike Dicka. Oh, well, Dicka. you know, who would win Hurricane? Mike Dicka. I'd say Mike Dicka. And Dicka. you know what? He'd get Harold's chicken after. Dicka. <laughs> So what's the, what, what's the, what, what's, what, what are we, wait, we're waiting for the, we almost got a boil here. Yeah, we're pretty much almost there to a boil. I mean, honestly, like, you, crank you, that heat you, up, yeah. I think we're all the all way. Right, this isn't exactly like, you know, this is a homeroom hot plate kind of situation, not like a, in like a big burner or what we got working behind us. So we'll kind of see what we can do with this. Um, you know, I think an Instapot pot probably would have worked better, but, um, anyway, so. Yeah, once we get to a boil and it's sanitized, then we're gonna go ahead and actually turn the flame off and add these hops. They're mosaic hops. I'll um, we'll show you guys, we'll open all that up. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna add some yeast to it once it's cooled down. This is actually a yeast that you can get over at Homebrew in Paradise. And if you're a home brewer, you don't have to worry about the temperature. You can just add the yeast and it'll do its thing. 
Um, most other yeasts, we really have to worry about temperature. Wait, yeah. Talk about like your setup here. I want to touch on that. You've got a pretty rad setup going on here. I mean, from talking about homebrew stuff to professional grade, I mean, everything's clean and aligned. You've got it all on one computer and just the setup is amazing. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> yeah, we, we basically went with the mash filter system because uh, it allowed us to use less grain in order to get more sugar. Um, so from a sustainability standpoint, it's great for that. Um, from a cost perspective, it's also great for that as well. It's also really fast, so it's allowed us to really be able to produce more beer in less amount of time. Um, and really allowed for a lot of the brewers to kind of have like more of a normal life and be able to focus on like special projects as a result. So it's been fun. It's kind of a rocket ship. <laughs> What's well, good? <laughs> well, we're, we're going to blast off the commercial for a second. We'll be right back. Um, we got some beer going. We're going to take care of that. We'll see you in a second. Bring home paradise in a can with Lanikai Brewing Company. Island inspired craft beers and spirits made locally in Kailua. Find our products on every island or swing by our tap rooms on Oahu. At Aloha Kia, you know a guy. Visit us at our seven dealerships statewide. Purchase a brand new Kia using Aloha Kia Express. Purchase at alohakia.com. Right on. Welcome back to the Art of Beer. We are still brewing this beer. We're with Josh from Hanukkah. We are at the brewery. How cool can that get? And we're, where are we at with this beer? Um, I think we're at the oh, point that it's add. flame out. We're gonna we're gonna add hops. So yes. when I say flame out, basically for all of these hoppy beers. We actually add hops when uh, the beer is done boiling. The reason we do this is because we get more flavor and aroma because they're not getting boiled off. That's the layman's way to do it. So Just I'm gonna take out. these mosaic hops from Yakima Chief Hops. Yakima Chief, send me cool things. <laughs> and, uh, Shout out to know, Yakima I'm Chief. Send us cool things. What kind of hops are you using? We're using mosaic. Yes. Uh, it's a cool variety that came around this. in 2014. Everybody give it a whiff. It's got a nice oh, bouquet. Yeah. Oh, uh, so. And you should take one of those and show them to the yeah, audience because well, they look like. You talk about like all different hop riders, right? What it's are like those? Rabbit food. See it. It's so, like rabbit pellets. Like rabbit pellets. So, so basically, what they do is they actually take the, the flowers of the hops, which kind of look. Wow, nice shot. That's good, right? So basically, they look like. Um, <laughs> one they time. look like. One uh, time. We'll be here all day. Uh, kind of like a cone flower, like a pine cone or you know, a cannabis bud. And basically what they'll do is they'll dry them out after they pick them and then they'll run them through a pulverizer and then it just becomes a dust and then they run it through like a pelletizer so it just turns them into these little pellets. So we're gonna go ahead, we're just gonna just gently, gently salt bay that. Sprinkle it in. Salt bay that. Yes, <laughs> good. I can feel it. What's the IBUs on this beer? Copy. Uh, yeah, I nobody cares anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. The whole like, what are the IBUs on this beer? I'm like, I don't know. Tastes good. I don't really care. <laughs> it's a little bitter. It's a lot bitter. Just yeah. drink it. To be fine. real, like half the time I'm making recipes, I actually don't normally look at like the IBUs unless it's like a classic style that I'm trying to get a range in. When it's IPAs, it's like, it's just all feel. And that's kind of the way I've been. Like a lot of other brewers are very like, trust the numbers, do this. And that works too. Like I'm also the cook that like, I'll just go to the grocery store without a list and pick things out and then like, you know, go home and make it. So, so. your spaghetti has all kinds of weird stuff in it, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think the weirdest thing that's, actually I haven't had a lot of weird things that go into spaghetti, but speaking of spaghetti, like my off hobby is tomato sauce. Okay. <laughs> that's really what I mess around with. So I've messed around with a lot of different brands of tomatoes. But oh, so what are we drinking now? Oh, I'm sorry. So right now we are drinking. Speaking of hops. Uh, yeah, we are drinking an unbearable weight of massive cage. So <laughs> we have been in what's called a cage war with Waikiki Brewing Company. The war is coming to a close. No one has yet to win because the way you win is by getting a cease and desist from Nicolas Cage himself. <laughs> Nicolas Cage, if you're watching, send it. <laughs> anyway, so, so brewing company. yeah, I hope so. But anyway, so basically for this label, we have uh, Joe Lorenzen, who's the former brewmaster of Waikiki Brewing Company. Um, he's a dear friend. So this was kind he's of our little of send off to him heading off to Northern California. Um, you know, he's not technically completely out of everything, but he's definitely taking a step back and going and uh, being with some of his family out there. And he's just, he's a really salt of the earth human and it's been really fun hanging out with him. 
Um, and you know, the guys that have taken over since at Waikiki are really cool as well. Like, it's been fun. Um, but this is not the last cage beer that we're gonna do. We just wanted to kind of have a good send off. Nicolas Cage actually has a new movie coming out. Uh, somebody texted me about, so we'll see what comes next on this. Cheers to that. But yeah, so. To Joe. And to Nick. Joe. To Cage Wars. Yeah. Joe. Come on, Nick. Your beers are good. <laughs> Mr. Cage. <laughs> he does this. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so, uh, sorry, I just moved the chair and realized I might have gotten out of frame. But, um, <laughs> so, let's break the fourth wall right now. We, get, we, get, um, well, anyways, we break so it all the time, it's this, fine. This beer has a melange of different hops in it um, from what was on the hot side versus what was on the dry hop. But realistically, what we just wanted to do is create a really big, juicy, hazy IPA that had hop character, fruit character, and super easy to crush. That's always been our theme with the cage beers. Um, there have been other cage beers that aren't necessarily a hazy, and that's cool. Like everybody can make cage beers, however. But I highly recommend anybody looking to get a cease and desist, get involved in the cage war. Well, if you're gonna do Nicholas Cage stuff, eventually you gotta make a beer that gets a little weird, because that guy is a little weird. So, I mean, keep it the theme and get weird. Oh. We're gonna <laughs> get weird. Unfortunately, we gotta stop now. We gotta get a little weird in the extended version on YouTube where we're gonna finish our beer here. Josh, thank you so much for letting us Come invade back your you brewery. See our beer. It's been great. Join us thank on you YouTube. for invading my brewery. Yeah, oh, I love it. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers We are uh, the Art of Beer, and we are back uh, welcoming our TV viewers to the extended the YouTube version. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, we're making a beer. We're hanging out with Josh Kopp from Hanakoa Brewing Company. Uh, we're drinking a new beer. We have so many things to talk about. It's this called beer is Crush a fun... Hellas, but what I'd like to do first is start my count. Shit, shit, shit. Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> shit, 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 shit. Okay, we'll stop there. Uh, my count is nine. Nine? Nine. That's nine. Okay. okay. So we're good. Right. We're single digits, so now we can get back to the beer. We'll come back right. to that Your later. mom's going to watch this. No. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be great. <laughs> She's not going to be surprised. I'm so proud that her son became a professional degenerate. <laughs> yeah. All right. So where are we on our beer and our beer and our beer? We're letting the, we're letting the beer that we're making cool down, and then right. the beer that we're drinking is actually still somewhat in the process, but uh, you guys might be able to be drinking it now, assuming that it's still around. This is actually Crush Hellas Volume 4. Crush and Hellas! Crush Hellas! Super tight! <laughs> and tell us the significance of why we crush Hellas. Uh, we crush Hellas for life. We crush Hellas at the altar of Lager. We crush Hellas at the Sabbath of Sacramices Pastoronis. Um, <laughs> That's actually the, the beer um, geeks are going wild Yeah, that's right the now. scientific oh, name for lager. Good. Anyway, so um, this year's Crush Hellas is really cool because what we did was we actually got the original barley variety of Pilsner malt uh, for this beer. So in Pilsen, uh, Czech Republic, uh, I don't even know what it was called at the time back then, Prussia or whatever, but um, we basically uh, or there's an English maltster uh, that basically took that variety and started growing it in England and bringing it back to life as one of their heirloom malts. And for fun topic, the malt is actually called Hana malt. <laughs> so we're like, oh, well, this is cool. Leads so right into it. <laughs> yeah, so it does have like a bit of an old world flavor. This beer is naturally carbonated. We might touch it up a bit. Um, it's still a little hazy, so, but it's got some time to clear up and whatnot. Um, and yeah. So, because you poured this beer still out of the fermenter, like. No, I didn't do that. Yeah, you did. <laughs> well, he did it's some made, of The beer's not done yet, so we're drinking the beer early. <laughs> yeah, we're drink so we're drinking the beer early for quality control yes. as reported on yes. the dock. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, but yeah, basically, um, it's, uh, it's still in the fermenter, um, but it does have some carbonation to it. We're still, like, cooling down the temperature, actually. And then once we do that, we're gonna actually transfer it to a conditioning tank. Um, for this beer, for what we're going for, we are gonna add some fining agents because we do want it to be brilliantly clear. Um, beers like Party Boy, we don't do that. We just put it into the um, horizontal bright tanks to try to clear it up, but it doesn't necessarily get all the way clear. Um, actually, if you were to try to naturally clarify this, 
it would probably take eight to 10 weeks. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. On like, top of the eight to six weeks it takes to like ferment the beer, right? And lager it, right? Kind of, yeah. I mean, they, a lot of people actually base it where it's like for every Play-Doh of uh, we lost the Reuben. Sugar. Oh, we did. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, you can keep going. Good. It's fine. But we can do whatever we want in this, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, we can. It's the extent of this okay. shit. Shit, 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 shit. Fuck, fuck, fuck it, fuck, fuck, fuck. I did it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. There's just so much of me that just wants to be like, like I can say whatever I want. That, that might have been. been I've, I've had a couple. There's been no sure. fucks. No, no, no. 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 more fucks than you. No, no, no. no. I've, I've, I've had some good ones. Oh, my fucking. Anyway, so. This beer was on it, like every year doing it has been really fun because I feel like it's been an opportunity to explore the style. Yeah. We've only done one Hellas other than this, and that was the window to Ericlea. Yeah. So um, this one, I'm, I've been really stoked just to kind of see like what kind of flavors we're gonna get just from the malt, because that's what the base beer basically calls for. But yeah, I mean, I don't know, if you guys had to pick a beer that you were on a desert aisle with, what would it be? Some kind of light lager. <laughs> I mean, it would. You can say it. It can be Coors. It can be Miller. It can I, be Hellas. I love Coors Light, but I don't want to be on a desert island with it. But it would be some kind of German lager, um, something that I could, that's a little light that I could crush. I mean, it, but it, it holds up enough. It has enough flavor, like if I'm eating something, so. You know my answer, should or Hellas. I would, I would sure, agree Robert with that. Ellis. Dave, what would you have on a desert island? I'm going to go back to that black lager, man. Okay, that's, that's totally cool. Because I'm going to be cooking on the, like a barbecue. I'm gonna, first thing I'm going to make is like a house and make sure I have water, <laughs> and then I'm going to make a barbecue so I can like have something to go Are with Are you going to make a bar with the house? Yeah, probably. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm going to go the crazy route. I'm going to go find my coconut best friend and then name him, and then, then we'll drink beer. You know? I'm not See, gonna, I feel like then, the whole desert isle thing really doesn't factor in like who's gonna potentially visit that desert isle. Like you could have pirates come. So naked all day yeah. then, right? I mean Nobody's coming. <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna have sunscreen. That's the hard part. Like all of us, if we didn't have sunscreen and we're on an island, everybody would yeah, think that it was an island inhabited by lobster people, like we're Zoybergs, like whoop, 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 whoop. I don't know. Lobster people with Hellas Loggers. With Hellas Loggers. <laughs> yeah. Hellas, Hellas I mean, Loggers. It's a fun bunch to party with. One thing I wanted to touch on, we, we talk a lot about beers that you did in the past. So Hanukkah, you guys do a rotating schedule of beers. I mean, you, you have a couple of core items that you do, but you guys keep rotating and making new things all the time and keeping it fresh. So that's something that breweries are starting to do, but there's still some that don't do enough of. I mean. Just talk about like how much work you guys put into keeping your schedule full and keeping a uh, new beer coming out. I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, a lot of that started with pandemic in, you know, in 2020, we just noticed that we had more reception when we had a new beer releasing. So it was like a new beer every week. That's what will keep people coming. And for a while it was just me. And now I'm really fortunate that like we have a brewing team, a marketing team, and we've all been able to really like on the brewing side, figure out what we want to do and then have a marketing team that can really try to take what we want to convey and put that out there. And like, it's no longer just on me to do it. And I was working in a vacuum in the very beginning and it was kind of difficult and you're just kind of shooting from the hip. And really what we want to do, especially on the brewing side of things, is really take time to explore like beers that we want to make as brewers for these one-offs. Like there's always going to be stuff that we know we're going to make because that's what's going to be in demand and that's what, you know, is going to sell. But you know, doing beers even like Dubliner, which, you know, we wouldn't normally think people would respond to, we were excited to do. So, I just really think that as much as we can keep everybody excited about what we're doing, then we're doing a good job. Because it's the same as chefs. They want to show you what they can do with the farms they work with and all that. So, yeah. I'm excited for your online ordering system. I mean, Tim will tell you how many times I got to, my orders come through at <laughs> Village, you know, just sit there and <laughs> click away. And then I, I pop in here, have a beer, take my beers to go with me. I mean, as you, we talk about beer releases and how people stand in line for hours. Well. You guys do it so often and you can get it online. You show up, have a beer, have something to eat, and then take 
take just, your order with you. I feel like the whole wait in a line uh, for a beer thing had was it came and went, and I'm I'm okay with that. Like there are still beers that people are gonna wait in lines for, like Pliny yeah, the Younger. The but they don't mean that anymore. There was like a zillion kegs that everywhere. Exactly, and you know I just as a brewer like there is a moment where you're like oh it's cool people want this beer and you're excited for it but do they want it for the right reasons yeah, right. and that's kind of where a lot of the colleagues i like interact with like question a lot of stuff because there is a secondary market where people resell beers just to trade it for money and that's a whole thing but you know, as brewers, it's kind of like, look, I'm selling it to you for a reasonable price. To enjoy. Yeah, and you know, that's what I want it to be. I want you to drink it. I also think there's not only a resale market, but there's like this whole social media flex issue. That yeah. People want to say, I got X beer that I waited in line for. I mean, I'm better than you are. We, <laughs> you know? we make beer to pay the bills. We make beer to feed the hype, but we also make beer to feed the soul, which is what we ultimately want to do on this side of things. And I just think that the more that you try to chase the hype, the farther away you get from the things that make you feel those like, like spine tingly moments. For the soul. Yeah. We're getting yelled at to stop, but can, can we just finish the beer real fast? Well, we have a few minutes. Yeah, let's, really? Can we add the hops? We got, let's, no, let's add, add the hops. We got, oh, we had hops. We had oh, no, so we, we got, got yeast. yeast. For those of you guys, it's been a while since we started this. We added some sugar in there that's going to need to be fed by yeast. And we added some hops in there that's going to add some flavor. Oh, that's good yeast there. <laughs> dump it, Josh. Ever, ever made dump some it. bread? Dump it. So I'm just going to dump it to crump it. Dump it. OK, it's going to go yeah, in. Nice. Oh, look at that. Look oh, at that. No, Oh, oh, I got into the beer. Don't worry, clumping. that's some good stuff. Yeah, stir that in stir. there, Dave. Yeah, yeah. So, Mike, yeah. Did, Mike did cut here. <laughs> yeah. Mike did cut here. Oh. If you guys can see this, it doesn't look like beer. Yeah, it doesn't look they like can. beer at all. But you know what we're going to do? But we're hey, going to make that into beer. Were, you let it ferment for a week and, or two days, right? You know what I did? I took some kimchi and fermented that too. Worked out just fine. <laughs> The Portuguese dicker. This is the Portuguese beer, right here. <laughs> this is Portuguese beer. And we do this, we get this. <laughs> hey, keep stirring. Oh, yeah, for just yeah, keep for stirring, two just keep stirring. Right, we're yeah. gonna, we're See, this is gonna go into the keep lab. Keep stirring next Saturday. You <laughs> come back and watch us stir some more. <laughs> Oh my oh god, my if god. you guys drink this next week Saturday, I feel so bad for you. Why? <laughs> Alright, four, we have to. four Saturdays from now. How about that? Okay. We're gonna filter yeah. We're gonna filter it a little bit. Yeah, we'll filter it. Oh, going filter! It's no. gonna be great. Well, Nothing's been filtered on this episode. Why start now? No, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I'm gonna bring the filter. Well, thanks for having me on the show, guys. Oh, thank you I for apologize this. for any embarrassing early. moments. Thank yeah. Thanks for joining us, guys. It's been The Art of Beer with Daniel, Tim, Josh Kopp from Hanukkah Brewing Company. This has been a pleasure. See you guys next go, week. Go get some, go get some, go. <laughs> <laughs> right on, dude.